This week's Torah portion is the first in the fifth book of the Torah. It begins, Eilah HaDevarim Asher Diber Moshe. These are the words that Moses spoke, and those words are incredible. This portion and each one of the portions in the last book of the Torah are master classes in public speaking. Moshe criticizes the Jewish people lovingly. He exhorts them, he educates them, and he inspires them and us thousands of years later. But one second, how can this be? When he first met God way back at the beginning of Exodus in Shemos at the burning bush, one of his many excuses for his reluctance to assume the mantle of leadership of the Jewish people was, Lo ish devarim anochi. I am not a man of words. And God did not contradict him. He said, okay, I'll send Aaron, your brother, Aharon, as your spokesperson. So how did the person who had a speech impediment, who was not a man of words, become later in the Torah, the man of words. The answer, the Medrash tells us, is that he was cured. When he stood at Mount Sinai at Har Sinai, when the Torah was given, he, along with any other Jew who had an illness or an ailment, was cured. The blind could see, the deaf could hear, the cripple could walk, and Moshe and others like him who had speech impediments were cured and were able to speak fluently thereafter. It ain't over till it's over. So you'll say, that's not a good place to learn that lesson. God waved the magic wand. He doesn't do that very often. So consider this. When Moshe was younger, around 20 years old, according to most commentators, he had risen in prominence in the house in which he was brought up, the palace, to become the overseer of that palace, Pharaoh's palace. He was kind of a big deal. And yet, by the end of his career, the Torah tells us that he was the un of Mikal Adam, the most humble person in the world. That took work. Compare that to the famous case of a young boy who, even into his teenage years, for complicated reasons, wasn't even allowed to be part of his parents' household. He was out in the back, tending the sheep. But he didn't go down in history. He's not known as Dave the Shepherd. We know him as David Melech, King David. He started off with the most humble of beginnings, became the king of Israel. Moshe was the opposite. Started off as the overseer of the palace, became the most humble person who ever lived. Your story is not fully written until the last chapter. I heard an interview on the radio earlier this week. A couple people were talking about a figure in the sports world. I won't say who it is because enough people have been slinging mud at him lately that I don't need to jump on the pile. But one of them was pontificating and saying, you know, when you're a teenager, in your 20s, maybe into your 30s, you can still change. But once you hit your 40s, 50s, or later than that, you are who you are. You can't change. We say no. That's not true. You can always change. Life is a journey and requires constant introspection and constant attempts to work on yourself, to become a better person. A rabbi once said, and I quote this often, to myself especially, that if you're the same person at 30 that you were at 20, or at 40 that you were at 30, or at 70 that you were at 60, you have wasted 10 years of your life. That's tragic. It is never too late to so roll up your sleeves and get working on changing yourself.